can. We are recording. Okay. And then you will send it to us? Uh, yeah. Because I this is going to be very difficult for me, but I will do my best. <laughs> Don't worry. So, hello, Daniel. Hi there. How are you doing? Fine, fine. Hi, Father Daniel. Hi, Christina. Are you very good in the statistics? <laughs> so then uh, I want to repeat what I was saying at, uh, at the beginning, okay, before you join the, the, the class, okay? My idea, okay, is that, you know, I know that you are not a mathematician. I know that maybe was long time ago that you saw something about West statistics and mathematics, okay? So then the idea is try to, to study real life situation, okay? Using real data, okay? And then try to see what information you can get from the data, from, from, from the real data, okay? So then that one is, you know, the, 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 the course will be more based on projects, okay? That you have to do, okay? And, and that one is the, the idea. So try to learn, Okay, doing things. Okay, so that one, that one is the. I have been seeing that we have some people here with some biology uh, background. Okay, so then I will try to, you know, to 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 find some some projects on on this direction. Okay, but for today, what I will do is I will uh, I will show you how to misuse statistics how people can make mistakes and manipulate the data, okay? And that one is something that is relevant, okay, for, for everybody, because, you know, uh, politicians, okay, uh, could lie because they say that, you know, they are taking their decisions, okay, based on data, okay? But that one is not always true, okay? That one is, could be a, a manipulation and we need to be aware of that situation and we need to understand what, what, what is happening, okay? And then the first uh, example that I want to show you, okay, is, give me a second, let me, uh, let me find the data. The first, the first example that I have for you, okay, is an example of a, a baseball, okay? So then I want to, to show you one, one example about, about baseball, okay? And then I will show you how easy it is to, you know, to manipulate, okay, the, the public, okay, using, and in this case, this one is real data. So then this means I, I, I am not using, I am not recreating new numbers. I, I, I will use the real data. Okay, let me, this one is the information that, that we have, okay? I want to talk about baseball, okay? Maybe you know this name, Derek Jeter. This one was a famous baseball player, right? Captain of the New York Yankees, okay? And then we have this other guy, David, David Yosti. Oops, Professor, yeah. your marker, can I cannot see it. See. I think if you turn the light off, it would be better easy to see. Okay. Yeah. See. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. Let's try this. I see. No. Is that no. too dark? Yeah, too dark. No, anything change? Nothing changed. No. Let's go back here. Mm. Maybe a black marker. Let me find a black marker. Okay. No, I have a black marker here. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Good. Try a little better. Yeah. No, I think that is the same thing, right? Or maybe this one is still the same thing. It's the same thing. Same, the black. 
Try, try again. Okay. That's better. Can you see that? The name? That didn't do better. David. David. Yeah, David. I, I can see that. Okay. Yeah, I can see David. David, yeah. Okay. David Justice. Um, we have David Kitter. Okay. All right. And I think that this one was the year 95. This one was the year 96. Okay. And then we have this table here. Then let me see the data. Give me one second. Okay. They are here. 1248. Okay. This one is 103. This one? 4. And then 45. So then, I don't know. Maybe, can you reproduce the table? Need that, but make it bigger underneath. Just bigger, bigger numbers. Just reproduce okay. the table again. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Just reproduce it again underneath, just bigger. Yes, there you go. Exactly. Very good. Now we can see better. All right? People can see the numbers. Better. Yeah, I can barely see the number. Okay, so these one are the numbers that we have in the table. Okay, yeah, better. I think that you can see that one. Okay, yeah. so the, what do these numbers mean? Okay, so for the people that knows about baseball, okay, so these one are the hits, okay, of the register in the year 95, okay, and this one is the at bat appearance, okay, so this means that the register was 48 times at bat and he had 12 hits in the year 95, okay? And then for 96, he was at bat 582 times, okay? And he had 183 hits, okay? And then, okay, maybe you're familiar with baseball, okay? Uh, you know that one of the most important statistics in baseball is the batting average, right? So then, and that one is what I want to do. I want to compute the batting average, okay, of Derek Jeter and David Yorty, okay? And I want to compare, okay? And I want to know which one was the better player, okay? So then what we have to do, batting average is only used like 20 percentage, right? So this one is 12 on 48, so you have to make a division here, okay? And then the batting average for Derek Jeter, okay? Let me use the, the black book. Okay. So was I with 250, okay, for 95. And then for the year 96 was 340. Okay. And David Justice, okay, was in the 95, 253, okay. And then for 96 was 321, okay? Those ones are the average of these two players, okay? So then now the natural question is, who is the best player, okay? So then what you see, okay? You see that the leader was bad in 250, okay? And in the same year, David Bates, David Yosti was batting 253, right? Mm -hmm. And in the year, so who is better in the year 95? David Yosti, right? And in the year 96, who was the better player? David Yosti, right? So then what is your conclusion? David Yosti is better than, than, than David Yosti, right? So then, do you believe me? Do you agree with me? No? Do you like more David Yosti? Well, I mean, if you look at the total number of at-bats, it doesn't, it, David Yosti didn't have the same amount of at-bats. So if he did have the same amount of at-bats, they would have a similar batting average. Yeah, they have. The numbers are not so different, okay? 250 by 253, 350 by 221, okay? They are not different, okay?
okay? There is not a bit different, okay? But in both cases, okay, the average is in favor of debit justice, right? So then using just this data, okay? And of course, in real life, this one is not only the real data that you study, okay? You have to study, you know, how many home runs, okay, double, so on, so, so on, okay? So I don't know the impact of the game, okay? There, there is a fantastic player, okay? So then, but, but, but if you only show these two numbers, okay, and this one is player A and this one is player B, okay? Using this information, okay, so then you will say, okay, this guy, okay, is a little bit better than this one, right? So because this one is the batting average, okay? So then that, that one is the only thing that we are doing, okay? So we are presenting the data in this way, okay? But now what, what I want to do is I want to present the same data in a different way, okay? So what are you going to do? I have a question. Yeah, sure. Where, what, Christina, yeah. where the 250 and the 314 and the, where are those numbers coming okay, from? Okay, so this one is your, you have to divide, 12 divided by 48, okay? You made the division and you multiply by 1,000, okay? That one is the way in which you compute batting average, okay? So if you divide 12, 12 divided by 48, that one will be equal to 0 0.25, and 0 0.25 times 1,000 is this 250, which is the batting average, okay? So in this case, the 253 is 104, divided by 411, okay? And then multiply by one, well, what sounds it, okay? It's exactly. very similar to the percentage. Exactly, okay? that's what I was gonna say. In percentage, it's 25%. In percentage, it's 25%. In baseball, they don't use percentage. In baseball, what they use is this average that is like the uh, thousand. thousand percent. It's per thousand. It's per thousand, like okay? Like the PPT that we use in class, parts per thousand. Ah, okay. so then it's just, you know, it's just a percentage, okay? And indeed, this one, this idea of percentage is something that you can keep in, in, in mind. So this one is just like a percentage, but in this one, percentage is per thousand, okay? So then, okay, this percentage of this per thousand, in this case, okay, are better, are better for David Yostis, right? So in the year 95, was better for David Yostis, and in the year 96, was better for David Yostis. So conclusion, David Yostis was a little bit better, right? So then now I want to, Instead of presenting data in this way, I want to combine the data, okay? I want to see now, not the data for year 95 or year 96, okay? Mm -hmm. I want to use now the total data, okay? In both years, okay? Mm -hmm. both so years then now, what I will do is, okay, so I have 95 together, and 96, everything together, okay? And then if you combine both years, so then you have 12 hits for the register in 95, 183 83 hits for the register in 96. So in total, you will have 195 hits, right? And how many back appearance? Okay, you will have combined 630. Do you see the numbers? Oh, perfect. Okay. And now for David Yosti, Okay, what you have, you will add the hits. Okay, that one will be 149. And then you have how many a bad appearance? You will have five, five, one. Okay, and now with this number, which is the same data, but the data combined, okay, I want to compute again the batting average, the percentage of the per thousand. Okay, in this case, you divide 185 divided by 630, and that one is equal to one. Three hundred and nine. Okay. Point thirty one 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 one. Okay, so point thirty one 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 one. Okay, so let's <laughs> round it up. Round it up. Three hundred and ten. Okay, and then in this case, one hundred forty nine divided by five hundred fifty one. Two hundred. Okay, so which one was the best player? The register. So it's the same data. Okay, and then you are arriving to the opposite conclusion here, right? So then it's just the way in which I present the data. Okay, so what changed your conclusion? 
right? Mm -hmm. So this one is called Simpson paradox, okay? And this one happens every time that you're dealing with percentage, okay? So, and the key here is that the magnitude, okay, of the data is different. Here you have 582, and here you have only 48, okay? And then when you deal with percentage, okay, when you're making division, okay, and you have different magnitudes, okay, so things could go crazy, okay, like this situation, okay, so I present the data in one way, okay, for example, if I want to sell the register, okay, what I will do is I will present this data, okay, and I will say, you know, the register is much better than David Yorty, so you have to pay me more money, okay, so, but if I want to buy the register, what I will do is I will present the data in this way, okay, you know, in the year 95, okay, David Yorty was better, Okay, so the register is worse than David Yorty. And in the year 96, the same thing. The register was worse than David Yorty. So then I will pay less money for the register. Okay, so then it's the same number, the same data, okay, but you can manipulate the result. Okay, so the conclusion, okay. So then that you, you need to be aware of that. Okay, and this one is with the register and David Yorty. And now what I want to show you is another example that this one could be more interesting for you, Christina. Okay. Let me show you here. How can I share the screen? No. Uh, I think that would be maybe share a screen here. Hello, but okay, but that's my screen. Yeah. Multi Multi okay. Yeah. okay, share. Let me see. Okay. And now I can share the screen. Okay, so then this one. Yeah, I am sharing this. Oh, no, this one is. Okay, no, no, no. no, you have to stop share the screen. Stop share. Stop share. I have to stop. You have to stop share. Right, okay. let me see. No. Uh, out. Uh, here, stop share. Stop share. I stop share. Yes. Okay. okay. And now let me try. Okay. This one. Yeah. Okay, so then now you can share. Okay. And you have to close here the screen. Yes, sorry. Okay. okay. So then this one is what I was saying. This one is called Simpson Paradox. Okay. This one is the information that you have on Wikipedia. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this one is the information. Okay for the register and David Yosti, okay? So here you have the information here, 250 and 200 versus 253, 314 versus 321. So these numbers are, you know, greater than for David Yosti than for the register. But however, when you combine both GR together, what you have is 310 versus 270, okay? So, and this one is one situation, but for example, you can, you know, see another situation here, okay? And this one is something that is relating with, with you guys, okay? So by mm -hmm. medicine, biology, okay, whatever, mm -hmm. okay? You have two different treatments for kidney stone, mm -hmm. okay? And then you are dividing, okay, the kidney stone into different categories, okay? A small stone, a large stone, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you have different groups, okay? And then you want to study what is the data? And you want to decide which one is the best treatment, treatment A versus treatment B, okay? Mm -hmm. So then if you see what happened for a small stone, okay, which one is working better? A, right? Mm -hmm. And which one is working better for large stone? Also treatment A, right? So then what is your conclusion? If you want to, you know, if you want to sell, you know, your pharmaceutical company, okay, what would you say, you know? So, you know, my, my, my method is better for a small stone and also better for large stone. Okay, so then overall, my method is the best one, right? Mm -hmm. So then, okay, so, but however, what happens if you combine the information together? Okay, mm -hmm. what is the percentage of 
to six here when you compare when you combine information it will be in the other way right mm -hmm. So, it will be, so then we be that the other one, okay, the, the, the method of my of my competence, okay, which is better, okay. So these are the same numbers, okay. So I don't change, you know. I am not cheating, okay. I am not lying, you know. I am just presenting the information, okay, in a way that is in my favor, okay. So and then this one is what sometimes you can see with statistics, okay. And sometimes you can see this one, okay, in a good faith, okay. So maybe you, you know, you, you you are not aware of what is the situation, but sometimes this one can be done, okay, using you know misleading, okay, and on purpose, okay. So and then that one is you know some of the things that that that, that, that I pretend to show you in, in in this class, okay. So some examples, okay, and then you know, just to be aware, okay. I know that you are not expert on the field. Okay, so but the point is that when you're dealing with data with data data, okay, has you know a minimum knowledge just to know that okay, so maybe I should go and talk with one specialist here with somebody that knows the matter, okay, and then I you know has some 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 mm -hmm. more important input, okay. Mm -hmm. So that one is one of the of the situation that, uh, that I want to, to show you, okay. I know. Here, so let me stop sharing the screen. Stop sharing. And let me share the screen again. Let me give me one second. Oh, let me share the screen again. Okay, so then let me share. Mm -hmm. So this one is your Canva course. Okay, this one is the home page. Okay, and then what I want to show you here, okay, on modules. Here. I will be posting some material for this class. Okay, the first one is this this one that we have here. Okay, and the title is "This is how easy it is to live with statistics." Okay, so then when you click here, okay, what you will see are you have three different videos. Okay, YouTube videos. Okay, that you can watch. Okay, so then that one is something that I will try to do. I will try to you know post different materials. Okay, we don't have a book. For this class, okay. What we have is, you know, uh, material that I will be posting in, on Canvas that I will be sharing with you, okay. Could be some notes, some YouTube videos, okay. So, and here you will have some other examples, okay, of me using the statistics, okay. And to be honest, okay, so some of the situations here were, you know, uh, amazing. Some of the mistakes, okay, that people did here were, 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 were amazing, okay. And, Usually, okay, in medicine, okay, in health science, okay, this one is very dangerous, okay, because if I made a mistake, you know, in mathematics, okay, so computation, okay, so maybe it's not a big deal, or maybe you made a mistake here just in a baseball game, okay, oh, what is the consequence, okay, so you win one more game or you lose one more game, but that's it. But when you make a mistake with, you know, in a trial, okay, or when you make a mistake using a medicine, okay. That one we have, you know, the very important consequence, right? So then, so uh, I recommend you watch these videos, okay? So uh, it are, are around like 20 minutes long, each of the videos, okay? Uh, but, you know, there are a lot of in, in important, uh, uh, interesting situations, okay, about the misuse or the misinterpretation, okay, of a statistical results, okay? So that one is, 
one of the goals okay that i have for today okay so we were you know doing and show you one example about how you can manipulate the data or how can you present the data in different way okay in order to support okay your point of view okay and here you have some other videos okay that we will show you how people can you know manipulate the data okay now with more uh, uh, important consequence okay and that one is one thing okay and now okay i want to talk a little bit about a uh, lottery okay uh, if I want to about uh, to talk about lottery, I want to talk about something that is called expected value. Okay, so this one is a situation. Okay, so you have a random process. Okay, when I call a random process, I is, uh, I, I, I mean you are doing experiment. Okay, and it's not deterministic. So this means that you don't know what will be the outcome of that experiment. Okay, it's something ra random. For example, you roll a dice. Okay, when you roll a dice, okay, you don't know which one will be the outcome. Okay, you know that the outcome could be one, two, three, four, five, or six, right? So, but you cannot be sure about the outcome. Okay, so now let me ask you something. Okay, are you familiar with something that is called probability function? Okay. Probability function. No. What? No. no. So, probability function is just this one is so how many outcomes you have when you roll a dice? Okay. When you roll a dice, how many different outcomes do you have? Six, okay? So then the probability function is just a function that will assign a probability of each of the outcomes, okay? So then in the case of rolling a dice, okay? So when you're rolling a dice, what do you think that would be the probability, okay? Of getting a six or the probability of getting a five, okay? If you are using a fair dice, what would be the situation, okay? All the numbers have the same probability, right? So then it's very natural to think that the probability would be one sixth, okay, for each number, right? So then that one is the probability function. For example, when you toss a coin, okay, you have two different outcomes, right? Head and tails, okay? So then you have probability function, and this case the probability function would be 50% versus 50%, okay? So then you have two different outcomes, okay? And then for each outcome, you are assigning a probability, okay? Sometimes, okay, that one is something that you can compute, you know, very easy, okay, like this example, sometimes requires more computation and sometimes is very difficult, okay, so then one of our goals, okay, in science is find probability function, okay, estimate probability function, because you can estimate probability function, then maybe you can, you know, no, okay, what will be the behavior of the stock market tomorrow? Okay, so then for example, the outcome for the stock market, you have two different outcomes for tomorrow. The stock market can go up or down, okay? So it would be nice if you can find what is the probability function for the stock market, right? Because then you can win money, okay? So as you can figure it out, okay, in the case of the stock market, so do that is very difficult, okay? Because in the case, otherwise everybody will be free, right? Because everybody will be betting, okay, without any problem, okay. So then, one thing is the probability function, but something, okay, that is very uh, interesting study is the expected value of a random process, okay. So then, expected value, the name could be misleading. Okay, because expected value, okay, is not the outcome that you will expect on your experiment. Okay, for example, you roll a dice. What is the outcome that you expect? Okay, you can expect any whole number between one and six, right? So that one is the expected value. The expected value is the following thing. Okay, you roll a dice one time. Okay, so then let me here. I don't have to use any more this. You roll a dice one time, okay? And then the first time you get a three, okay? The second one, a four, the third one, a one, then five, another one, a three, a four, and so on, so on, so on, right? Yeah? So then, suppose that you roll a dice 1,000 times, okay? 
And then you have in the board the 1,000 outcomes that you have, okay? Now, what you do is you will compute the average of those values, okay? So then you have to add, okay, all the outcomes and divide by the number of times that you will repeat and that you will roll in the dice, okay? So in this case, 1,000, okay? So that number is the expected value, okay? So the expected value is no the outcome that you have in the, the expected value is the outcome that you can expect as average, okay, of different rollings, okay? So then, okay, in the case, okay, of rolling a dice, the perfect situation, okay, the perfect situation, what would be, okay? Suppose that you roll a dice six times, okay? What would be the perfect situation? The perfect situation would be that one time you get the one, another time you get the two, Three, four, five, and six, right? This one is the perfect situation, the theoretical situation, right? So then, of course, this one is not what always happens, right? So you can roll a dice and you can have one, 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 and one. I am talking about a fair dice, right? So you have, you know, you're cheating with the dice, okay? That one is a different problem, okay? So the fair dice, you can have this situation here, right? So then, if you want to compute, okay, the expected value, so what do you know? You know that what is the probability of a fair day for one? It will be one over six. And here, another one over six. And here, one over six, one over six, one over six, and one over six, right? So then, what is the expected value when you roll a dice? Okay. So then you compute the expected value in this way. You will multiply one, which is the first outcome that you have, times the probability of this outcome, okay? So then plus two, which is the value of the second outcome, times the probability of the second outcome. It's a kind of average, okay, among the different outcomes, but this is an average that is weighted by the probability, okay? It's the same thing that maybe you have been seeing when you are a student, okay, that you have, you know, the overall grade in, the, in, in, a, class, in a course could be, you know, 40% the test, 50% the homework, 10% attendance, okay, 25% final exam, okay, so what you're doing is you are computing an average, okay, but each different assignment have a different weight, right? So this one is the same thing that you're doing here. So this one is the expected value, okay? So, and you compute the expected value here, okay, this one would be one over six, sign one, plus one over six, sign two, plus one over six, Sign three plus one over six, four plus one over six, sign five plus one over six, sign six, right? So then now let's do some math here. I have one over six, okay? In each the term, I can take common factor here, one over six, okay? And then I can add here one plus two plus three plus five plus four plus six. Do the math, this one will be equal to 21 divided by 6, this one is equal to 3.5. So the expected value when you roll a dice is 3.5. So then again, the expected value is not what you can expect as outcome, okay? Because when you roll a dice, it's impossible to get 3.5, right? You will have one, two, three, five, or six, okay? But it's impossible to have a point, a, a, a decimal, a value here with decimal here, right? So, However, when you repeat the experiment of rolling a dice, okay, 1,000 times, 1 million of times, in average, okay, what you will expect is that the average will be very close to 3.5, okay? So expected value is something that is, you know, very important when you are dealing with statistics, okay? Because that will give you a, a, a general behavior, okay, of, 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 of the situation that you're studying, okay? And then what I want to do now, Okay, I want to study, okay, uh, this situation, okay, with the lottery, okay, and indeed this one would be, you know, the fair project that you have to realize, okay, so the fair assignment and the fair project that you have in Canva is the following, so what you have to do is you have to find the information about a lottery, okay, I don't know how many different lotteries you have here in the United States, but I think that you have Lots of different lotteries here in the United States, okay? So then find the real information, find a ticket, 
lottery. You don't have to buy the ticket. You can you only have to have a real ticket. Okay, so find information on the compute the expected value. Okay, on that situation. Okay, so and what is the meaning of the expected value? Okay, when you're playing the lottery. So that means okay, how much money you can expect to win? Okay, if you play the lottery a lot of times. Okay, in average. Okay, so is the expected value of a lottery ticket is positive? What does this mean? This means that may say play the lottery, okay? Because if whatever if you have the expected value of the lottery as positive number, okay, this means that you can expect has some return in your money, okay? Of course, if you have you know a well-designed lottery, the expected value would be negative. So because the lottery is okay, so when, and that one is the, the case. So usually, okay, what you have in the lottery is that in average you lose money. You can be very lucky, okay, because you can win. Okay, and if you win, okay, so I will not see your face here in this class, pretty sure, okay? So, <laughs> and, 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 and the same thing with me, right? If I win the lottery, so sorry for you guys, okay? So, but then, you know, I will be, you know, in Hawaii, okay? So, drinking mojito, okay? So, then, so that, but as average, okay, what you will expect is that you lose money, okay? Then, that one is the first situation. That one is what the, the, fair, the fair assignment that, 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 that I want to, uh, to do with you, okay, is that one, okay? So then find, you know, a lottery, okay? I don't know Powerball or whatever. I don't know how many different lotteries you have in the United States, okay? And compute the expected value, the real expected value, okay? And then if you're having any problem, okay, so you can always write me an email, okay? So then if that one is not, it's not the problem, okay? You can always contact me, professor, you know, this one. And this one is important. So what, what I expect is that everybody, should have a different lottery, okay? Because otherwise you want to use power wall and you also have to use power wall. So what is the point? Okay, no. Try to no use different, different, different lotteries. Okay. Send me an email. Okay. Professor, I will use this one. Okay. And I will give you the okay. Okay. So you can keep going. Okay. And then try to compute okay the expected value. So in order to compute the expected value, what you have to do is you will have, I don't know, different options. Okay. Because when you play a lottery, okay, you have different options. Okay, so you can win, I don't know, one million of dollars, or you can win, I don't know, ten dollars, or you get the reward. Okay, so then you have different, and then you have to compute, okay, the probability for each of the different options. Okay, and then with the probability of the different options, okay, you can do the computation and find the expected value. Okay, so then that one is the first project. Okay, and I want to show you this in Canvas. Okay, because I have. A computation, okay, for you uh, here in Canvas. So let me see. Oh, this one is go to assignment. This one is the fair assignment, and this one is the PDF. And then this one is, for example, okay, the expected value for this uh, lottery, okay. So this one is the situation, okay? Suppose that you have only three possibilities, okay? This one is not a real life example, okay? In real life example, maybe the situation will be, you know, more difficult, okay? But that one is what I want to do. I want to, you know, to, to, to use real data, okay? So then this one is just an example in which you have only three different possible outcomes, okay? You could receive $100 with probability equal to 0 0.1. You could have $15 with probability equal to 0 0.2, or you can get $10 with probability equal to 0 0.7. Okay, so three different outcomes. You play the lottery, okay, so and that one has the probabilities for each of the outcomes, okay? And now the question is, if the cost of the lottery ticket is $25, what is the expected value? Okay, so then here you have the computation. Okay, how do you compute the expected value? Is the first outcome is $100 times the 10%, which is of 0 0.1, okay? Plus the second outcome times the probability for the second outcome, okay? Plus the third outcome times the probability for the third outcome minus the $25 that you have to pay for the ticket, right? So then when you do the computation, this $2 is the expected value. So what does this mean? This means that if you play, okay, the lottery 200 times or 100 times, okay, you play 100 times, you could expect to win 
$200 as average, okay? Be careful, okay? Because that was what I'm saying. As average, you could expect to win $200. But there could be a critical situation. Maybe you very, very, very lucky, okay? And maybe, okay, every time that you play the lottery, you win the fair price. So then you have $100 per $100 per $100 per $100 for the $100, okay? Then you, it's amazing, right? Or maybe you are not a lucky girl, okay? And it's in the opposite, okay? Maybe the only price that you get is the price of $10, okay? So then if you are getting a price of $10 and you're paying $25, okay, you're losing money, right? So then the $2 is what you can expect, okay, a return every time that you play the lottery. But that doesn't mean that that one will be the real situation, right? So this means that if you repeat that experiment, okay, of the number of times, okay, then you will have, you know, a positive return, okay? Because two is greater than zero, okay? That one is in your favor, okay? So, for example, if you are here, part D, okay, the question here in part D is, in the long run, given the price of the lottery ticket and the probability of the return table, what do you think the state will do about the lottery, okay? Do you think that this business makes sense for the state? No, right? The state will lose money, okay? So then, may sense for you, okay? So I, I want to play that lottery, okay? So I know that, you know, in average, okay, I will be able, okay, to win the lottery, okay? And get some return, okay? So then, maybe not the fair price, okay? But, you know, but when you do the average, okay? So it will be on my favor, it will be positive, right? So then, that one is what I want to do, okay, for, uh, for the fair assignment, okay? This one is, uh, question number two, okay? And the question number two is uh, find a real lottery ticket, okay? And compute the expected value, okay? So do the computation for your own, okay? And then I want to show you something, okay? Let me see if you can, okay? Okay, so let me tell you something. This one is a movie, okay? I don't know, okay, if you know some of the other of the, of the, of the, of the movie, okay? This one is a movie, this one, was a, a, it's a real, a real history, okay? Mm -hmm. This one happened in, in real here in the United States, okay? Mm -hmm. And then was a guy that found a lottery with a positive expected value, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And he made a lot of money, mm -hmm. okay? So then, I mean, then what is my goal with, uh, with, with, with assignment? Please. Find a ticket with a positive expected value, okay? And then, you know, okay, so then we will play the lottery together, okay? So then, and then we will solve all our problems, okay? So, and then, Father, you are here, okay? So you are, you know, welcome to play with us, okay? So then, that one is your assignment. So you have to, 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 to find a ticket. So the best, the best, the best lottery for you, okay? So then, let me show you the, the trailer of the movie. <laughs> I think you need to put your volume so that we can hear. I think the volume is off on the uh, YouTube. <laughs> yeah, the more people play, the closer they get to the ideal. It's an approximation. Ah, I have competition. I'm 
I ran into a nerd. <laughs> And it's illegal. <laughs> so this is based on a real story. Yeah. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> wow. So it is it, a you know a funny history, okay. But what is amazing is that was a true history, okay. Exactly. So so then uh, 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 the people were just doing the math, okay. Yeah. And I will show you. Today, okay, what was the math, okay, that they were doing, okay, and I will, I, I will do that with, with this example, okay. So because this one is an example in which you have a positive expected value, okay, so you have positive expected value. So then I want to compare, I want to do the math for you, okay. So and then uh, that one is is what I want to show you, okay, and that one will be you know everything for 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 today. I want to end with, with this example, okay, um, and and this one is the idea. Okay, so one of the things that is important, okay, when you are studying this kind of problem, is not only the expected value. The expected value could be positive, okay, but you have some variation on the outcomes, okay. Here, for example, you have a variation of one hundred dollars versus fifty dollars on ten dollars, okay, and you have different probabilities for this outcome, okay. In the case of the dice, okay, this one is very constant because you have one over six is the probability for each of the outcomes, okay. So it's very uniform, okay? Indeed, this one's the name of the probability function, okay? This one's the uniform probability function because everybody has the same probability, okay? So then this means that if you play, if you roll the dice 100 times, okay? Then around one sixth of the times, okay? You have number one, one sixth of the time you have number two. So then we'll be always more or less the same, you know, number of times that you have one uh, outcome mm -hmm. and the other one. So it will be very uniform, okay? So, here in this situation, if you play 100 times, what could you expect? If you play 100 times, you will expect 10 times a price of $100, 20 times a price of $50, and then the other 70 times the price of $10, right? There is some variation, okay, on the outcome, okay? Mm -hmm. So that variation is something that we need, okay, to understand, okay, or we need to describe, okay? Because sometimes for the data, Okay, for the data, sometimes you have two different average. Okay, this one is greater than this one. Okay, but if the variation of this one, okay, is very wide. Okay, so then maybe sometimes, okay, so even if the variation is very, is, is the mean, is, is the is the better value is greater than in this case. Okay, maybe some of the outcome for this situation will be better than in the other case. Okay, so then the the variation, okay, mm -hmm. give me a very important information about the data. Okay. And then the variation usually you denote the variation as sigma square, okay. And then the way that you compute the, var the variance, okay, is in this case, okay, you sum the square, okay, deviation from the mean, okay. So uh, in this case, okay, I am not taking into consideration the 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 twenty five uh, dollars that you have to pay for the for the for the lottery ticket, okay. I am just taking into consideration, okay, the 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 one hundred dollars, okay, that you have a return, okay, with the twenty five here. I am moving the twenty five to the other side, so that is why I am using twenty seven, okay. So then, this one is the 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 the, the, <laughs> the way in which you compute the, the expected value. What you do, you have to do is. 100 minus 27 is the fair outcome minus this 27, okay, square, okay, and then you have to wait, okay, so you have to find here, okay, and multiply this one by the 10% because this will happen 10% of the time, okay, so then plus the second situation, the second situation would be 50 minus 27, okay, and this one will happen the 20% of the time, so you multiply by 0 0.2 plus the last situation, okay, is this one, okay, and this one happens 70% of the time, so this one, when you do the computation, this one is a 41, okay, so this one is a number that represents, okay, how uh, different are the outcomes, okay, how wide will be the outcome, okay, so here you have a variation between 100 and 10, 
Okay, so this means that you have 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 100, 50, 10, 10, 10, 10, 50, 100. So the variation, okay, is represented by this 441, okay? Mm -hmm. There is another important number, okay? That is the square root of the variance, okay? This one is very easy to compute. One that you know the variation, this one is very easy to compute. And this one is your sigma, okay? Sigma is the square root of the variance, and this one is equal to 29, okay? In this case, so this example, this one is equal to 29, okay? Uh, yeah. Why is the mean 27? I see that it's 25 plus 2, but why is that the mean or the average? No, uh, this one is, I should, I, I should, I should write this one, the mean without taking into consideration the cost of the ticket. Okay. So if you, okay, so if, if you, if you do consider the cost of the ticket, okay, because 25 is a fixed cost, okay, so that you have to use every time, okay, so, but then if you, yeah, it's a group, okay, exactly, exactly, so then this one is the variance, okay, not for the, not for the, for, for the return, you know, it's, it's for the return without, without taking consideration the defenses, okay, so, that is why I'm using, you know, 27. If you want to use, okay, the mean equal to two, then instead of 100, you have to use 75, okay? Because that one is the net return that you get, okay? So it then- has to be growth, well, all growth? Or oh, all exactly, growth. exactly. So, right. so, then, yeah. so But since I am just studying the variation oh, yes. on the data, okay? So if you okay. add 25 or you subtract 25 on each value of the data, the variation is the same, so then the variation is the same. So that is why that doesn't matter, okay, why are you- In this case, it's better to use the growth like that, the growth, because otherwise, if you use a net, then subtracting 10 from 25- It will be negative, yeah. You have to deal now with the negative numbers. So for the computation, and that is, and for the computation anyway, you have a negative number when you make the square, okay, it will be positive, okay, so then, but you know, a shift on the data, a shift on the data, okay, doesn't change the variation. Right. Okay, so then uh, uh, we want to study the we want to study the variation. Okay, so then, okay, so uh, now what I want to do now, okay, um, one is what uh, require more uh, advanced uh, understanding of the math. Okay, and then this one is what you have to 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 let me know. Okay. Where are you on on on, on this part? Okay, mm -hmm. is yeah. I know that the expected value is positive. Okay, for the lottery. Okay, so I know that as average, I will earn two dollars every time that I play the lottery. Okay, mm -hmm. but sometimes I can be very lucky. Okay, because I will win the fair price one hundred dollars. Okay, mm -hmm. so the I am investing twenty five dollars, and then I receive one hundred dollars. So I want $75, but sometimes I am not so lucky, okay? And sometimes I will win only $10, so then my net value will be negative 15, right? So I will lose money, okay? So, then, so the one of the things that I want to do is I want to know how many times or how many tickets do I have to buy in order to guarantee that I will have a positive return with a 99% 99 okay, of confidence or with a probability of 99%, okay? So of course, I cannot guarantee that I will always have positive return, okay? Because sometimes, okay, you can get only $10 as a price, okay? Mm -hmm. So, and even if you play 1 million of times, maybe you are so uh, luck, <laughs> okay, that you always get $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, $
that I will get a positive return, okay? And that is why he was having this meeting in the town, mm -hmm. okay? Because he need a lot of money, okay? So and maybe with your save is not, saving is not enough, okay? So then, you know, I have to, you know, we can create, you know, a committee, okay? So then give me all your money, okay? We will play with your money because if we have it, more tickets, okay, the uncertainty, okay, will be less, okay? So it will be in your favor, okay? So then that one is, I think that is, 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 is it's a great movie. Uh, I will love, okay, do this kind of thing with the real data of the movie, okay? I don't, I don't know the real data of the movie. Maybe you can find that one, you know, somewhere, okay? So, but at least with this example, we, we, we can do that, okay? And then, this one is uh, uh, the situation. Do you know, do you know, do you, that? exactly, so we are looking for the sample size, okay? We are looking for how many tickets, do we have to buy, okay? So then, what do you know about normal distribution? But at least I, I really don't know anything. Okay, but you heard that name? Yes. You heard that name? Yes. So, it's, so, so for my group, if I may, for normal, remember the polymorphic uh, traits in, um, in genetics, right? Average height, right? That's a normal distribution, Gaussian distribution. Bell curve. Bell curve. Oh, come on. Think back a couple semesters. <laughs> we talked about most traits in genetics are not yes and no. Most traits are not Mendelian. It's a range, right? It's an average height, an average hair color, etc. That's a normal distribution. That's a Gaussian curve. Mr. Gauss discovered this. <laughs> Maybe you have seen this kind of image, okay? So it's this kind of curve, okay? So then I I will say without any doubt, okay, that this curve is the most important curve in mathematics, okay? So because there are a lot of process, okay? There are a lot of process in real life that follow this distribution, okay? The normal distribution, okay? So, and if something follows the normal distribution, then this means that you can compute probability over that uh, experiment, okay? And then, you know, uh, what you were saying, the height, the way, okay? So the, the, there are a lot of things that follow the normal distribution, okay? So then all these things follow the normal distribution. So then, for example, the average return of the lottery, okay? In this case, follow the normal distribution law, okay? So then what does this mean? Okay, so in our example, okay, this means that we want to compute. Okay, let me see what is coming back. Okay. Zoom. Okay. Okay, give me one. Oh, a stop chair. Sure. Okay, so let me. Show. No, this one is not working. Where is Canvas? Okay, give me one second. Oh, okay, here. Give me one second. I have some technical issues. Yeah. So you have some undergrad in the program? Not really. I haven't seen it in this program, but I, mm -hmm. I did see it in undergrad. So undergrad, yeah. yeah. Did you what did you did your undergrad here or okay? I did my undergrad in Alabama. Okay. In what field? What's your passion? Biology. Biology? Sure. And also. Okay, so we see we see normal distribution. It's because it's the it's the The forest or any tree, for example, the dominant tree in this forest, the dominant species will be the largest and the most abundant tree. And that will follow the normal distribution. In other words, of, of that species, there are going to be some that are very tall, some that are somewhere in between. Okay? In humans, the average height, for example. Some people are very tall, some people are very short. Yeah, I fall in, I fall, <laughs> but 
outside yeah. of that range. Yeah, you're on the short end, but there's a difference, you see. So normal distribution is different for male and female. Okay, because it's what we call dimorphism. We have a moderate dimorphism in, in humans. Um, gorillas have an smaller the female gorilla looks like the size of a chimpanzee. Extreme dimorphism between male and female. We have moderate, so the average height of a man is about. Oh, professor, this is Jose. I'm, I'm just sorry, because I, I, I can see what you're doing. Um, and I understand the concept, but some of yes. you in number E, when you're trying to figure out the number of tickets, given all the variance, you're using a sigma value from calculus. I don't know if we would be able to delineate the, the actual numbers from a, a particular lotto. I don't know where that would be available. Uh, Sorry, can you repeat? Yeah. Yes, that, that you're using a sigma value, right? So let X- number, number, You're here, number, 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 number E, right, right. Because in one of the questions is that we wanna find out how many lotto tickets we would need to buy to win. And so that takes, that. that's question one. So you have to calculate the sigma, uh, but, I, I don't know if that information would be available from uh, different lotteries. No, 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 no. Okay. No, 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 no. There are two different questions. Okay. So okay. there are two different questions. Okay. So you have two questions. Okay. This one is the project. This one is what you have to do. Okay. So you have two questions. Question two is, you know, about, you know, find a real ticket. Okay. And compute the expected value for the real ticket. And that's it. You don't have to do anything. That, that one is the, everything that you have to do. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So then uh, that one is question two, but question one is about this problem. Okay. Question, question one, one is not about the ticket that you will study. Question one is about the situation here, the situation that we were studying here. Okay. Oh, I see. It's, it's the question is to answer the problem based on the information you give. Yeah. So then the ah, sigma, okay, the okay. sigma, the sigma that you have to use for, for question one. Is this one that we compute here is 29. Okay. Ah, okay. 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 So then we, we already have that information because we are using this example. Okay. So then, by the way, maybe, okay. So the, the sigma is something that you can, you can find the sigma. You can find for a real ticket, you can find the sigma. Okay. But what is the point? The point is that if the expected value for your ticket is negative, so then there is no way that. You can guarantee that playing a lot of tickets or buying a lot of tickets, you will have a positive result, a positive result, right? So here, okay, in this question, okay, so the question is how many tickets do you need to buy if you want to be 99% 99 sure that you will win more than 100 tickets? This question makes sense because in this example, the expected value is positive, okay? If you have a negative expected value, so then forget it about it, okay? So doesn't matter how many tickets, okay, you will lose money, okay? So then question one is about the, 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 the problem that I am introducing here in, in class, okay? No about the real ticket, okay? Got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those, yeah, those ones are fictitious numbers. So this one is, you know, I make up this, this number, okay? So then please, okay? If you find a lottery like this one, okay, please let me know, okay? Let me know, okay? So, okay. so then. Uh, this one is th th this one is the situation. Okay, so then the, the, the what what do you care? Okay, so when when you want to be sure that you will win money. Okay, so if you want to win money, okay, so you want to guarantee that in average. Okay, so this one is what you're doing. You will compute the average of your ending. Okay, the average of your ending it should be positive, right? So then this means that as average. So okay, maybe the first time. Very lucky, you win $75, okay? Maybe the second time you lose $15, okay? So, but if you play, you know, 1 million of times as average, okay? What you care is that you have a positive return, right? So then this one, okay, is the, the sample mean, okay? 
this XI here are the returns that you have for each ticket, okay? And then when you want to find, okay, you want to find how many times you have to play the lottery, how many tickets do you need to buy, okay? In order that this probability is equal to, 90, to 0.99, okay? So this one is what we're looking for, okay? So we're looking the probability of having a positive return greater than 0.99, okay? So then, now, this one is something very important, okay? This one is the sample mean, this one is the average, okay? The average of my earning, okay? And then what I was doing, okay, is I was saying is that the average of my earning have a follow a normal distribution, okay? So a normal distribution with parameters, and for the normal distribution, we have two parameters, and the parameters for the normal distribution are mu, which is the expected value, okay? And the uh, standard deviation, okay? So for my lottery, for my lottery, okay, the mean is two, the expected value is two, and the standard deviation is 29, okay? But for the average of the outcomes, okay, of your earnings, the expected value will be the same, will be equal to two, but now the standard deviation need to be, okay, modified by a square root of n. So then the standard deviation for the expected value, okay, of the average of your earnings is equal to sigma divided by a square root of n, okay? And this one is what is called, okay, this one is something that is very important in statistics. This one is what is called a central limit theorem, okay? So this one is one of the most important theorem, and that is why, okay, normal distribution is so important in nature, okay? Because basically normal distribution appear, okay, every time that you're taking average or something, okay, you have the normal distribution there, okay? So then, and if we have normal distribution, we can compute probabilities, okay? So then now, what is the situation? Okay, this one is what we want to compute. We want to compute the probability that X bar greater than zero, which is mean that the S the average of your ending will be greater than zero, will be positive, okay? It should be equal to 0 0.99, okay? And then I have to normalize this normal distribution. We can have infinitely many normal distribution, okay? Because the normal distribution depends on two parameters. But if we want to compute the value for the normal distribution, we only have in table the value for the normal distribution when you have mean equal to zero, and a standard deviation equal to one, okay? Those are the only values that you have in table, okay? So, but we can have normal distribution, for example, if you are studying, you know, the height of the people, okay? So then maybe the average height is 5.8. It's not zero, it's 5.8. And the standard deviation is not anymore one. It would be, I don't know, seven or four or whatever, okay? So then we can have infinitely many different normal distribution but we can compute normal distribution only for the standard normal distribution, which is the, the one that has parameters zero and one. So we have to make a modification. We have to transform the data, okay? We have to make some translation of the data, okay? In order to change our initial data into a data that follows a normal distribution with parameters zero and one. And this one is the math that you have to do, okay? What you have to do, you have to subtract, okay, the mean. So you are subtracting the mean and you have to divide by the standard deviation, okay? And then what we have here, okay, is what you have here inside the parentheses. Okay, or let me use the computer here. Okay, x, x bar greater than zero. Okay, what I will do is I will perform the same operation on both sides of the inequality. Okay, so then this one, what I do, I will subtract the mean. Okay, and I know that the mean is equal to two. So then x minus mu and zero minus two. And then I will divide by sigma divided by the square root of n. Okay, and this one is 29 divided by the square root of n. Okay, so I will do the same operation in both sides of the inequality, okay? Now, when you do the same operation in both sides of the inequality, this X bar here, okay, which follow a standard, a, a normal distribution, now will become a standard distribution, but a, a normal distribution, but in a standard normal distribution. And usually you denote the standard normal distribution by this C letter, okay? So then this one that we have, this one is what we can compute. We have to find a value of n in such a way that this probability 
is equal to 0 0.99, okay? But now the C is in a standard normal distribution and we can find the values, okay, of the standard normal distribution in a table, okay? So this one is the C value, okay? And the C value for 0 0.99 is to negative 2.33, okay? So then let me see a table here, okay? And let me see, I have a good table here. Okay. Maybe I should here. And by the way, okay, the only the, 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 the only way in which you can find you know the values for the normal distribution is using a software or using a table. Okay. There is no the computation that you can do in order to the to find it. So that one is just table, okay, with value. Okay. So then it's not it's not our way. So let me see a score. For example, this one is a table. Okay. This one is what I was doing. Okay, so this one is the original variable. Okay, and what we were doing is I was subtracting. Okay, the mean and I was divided by the standard deviation. Okay, so then I have the uh, C score. Okay, which is the one that I can find in table. Okay, and then this one is the table that we have. Okay. And then we are, this yellow region here represent the probability, okay? So this means that, okay, what you find here, for example, the zero point, here you have zero point 0.99 is where, so let me see. Here you have, okay, this guy here, okay? What are this, how do you understand this table? This zero point, this point zero zero 0.0099, okay? This one is yours. 0.1%, right? This one is almost 0.1%. So this means that this yellow area is 0.1% when you, when the value C here is, here we are on the row negative 2.3 and the column 0.3. So this means that if you get the value 2 point, negative 2.33, okay? So then the yellow region would be only 1% of the area and the white region will be the other 99%, okay? So then what you're looking for is a value in such a way that this area is the 99%, because this one is your problem. You want to be sure that you will have positive return 99%, okay? So then this means that you're looking for a value in which you have the 99%, okay, here. Okay, so that value is negative 2.33, okay? This one is the theta score, negative 2.33, okay? And then, Okay, if you have that information there, so you know that the probability of C greater than negative 2.33 is equal to 0 0.99, okay? And then now you have a very nice equation because now the equation that you have is that whatever you have in this five of the parentheses, inside this parentheses, is zero minus two divided by 29 divided by a square root of N, this number need to be equal to negative 2.33, okay? Okay, and then you have one equation and you can solve this equation for n, okay? And you can do the math. This one is your regular equation. It's not so difficult, okay? And when you solve this equation, okay, what you get is that n should be greater than 1,142. Okay, so this one is the border. Okay, so what does this mean? This means that if you buy 1,142 tickets, okay, I guarantee that with a 99% of probability, okay, you will have a positive net return, okay? And that one was the guy was doing in the, in, in, in the movie, okay? I don't want to spoil the, the movie, okay? But the first time that, the, the first time that he played the lottery, okay, he lose money because that one could happen, okay? So that, 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 that means that you have the expected value, okay? But this, but, but this is, no, no, he bought more than one, than one ticket, okay? But not, enough tickets, okay? No, 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 no tickets, hold on. He realized, okay, he, he realized something that, okay, oh, the expected value is positive. Oh, amazing, okay, so now let's buy some tickets, okay? But he was, you know, it was not enough, okay? He was very, 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 very bad luck, okay? So he was losing money, okay? And then he realized, okay, oh, the problem is that I am not buying enough tickets 
to get rid of the uncertainty. Okay, so then, and then he was doing the computation more or less in this way. Okay, and he decided that he should buy at least, you know, number of tickets. Okay, because the numbers on that on, on that situation are different. Okay, a number of tickets in order to have positive net return. Okay, and that is why he had to, you know, to get you know the get uh, the tag <laughs> okay together. Okay, so because you know we want to, you know, to, to get enough money to buy tickets and the guarantee that you know we will have because you know. Life happens, okay? You can have, you know, all the fair price, okay? Or you can have all the, you know, the shitty price, okay? So then life happens, okay? So, but you want to be sure and you want to be avoid, okay, of the center thing, okay? So, and then this one is the computation, okay? And this one is the way in which we can solve the, uh, and find, you know, how many tickets do we have to buy, okay? Okay, so this one is, this one is the, I, I'm guessing that this is a good example, okay? And you see the movie, okay? So this, they watch, you watch a movie, okay? You, you, you will have some input, okay? Uh, 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 it's nice, okay? And then uh, for the project, okay? What I have in mind, okay? So it's now question one, okay? Similar question, but more difficult, okay? Try to do your best, okay? Try to think about it, okay? And let me know, because now, okay, the question is no, how many tickets do you need to buy in order to have a positive net, net return? Okay, so now what I want to know is, I, I don't want, you know, I don't want to spend this time of buying the tickets and uh, if I will win only, you know, $2. Okay, so then I, I want to be sure that I will win at least $100. Okay, so that was my question. Okay? I want to win at least $100. How many tickets do you need to buy? Okay, so then it's very similar, okay, to what we were doing here. Okay, very similar to the situation, but you have to make some modification, okay? And then that one is one, one, one I want to, to, to test. I want to see, you know, what is your level of understanding, okay? Where are you, okay, understanding on normal distribution, okay? So don't be afraid, okay? Write me an email, okay? So then tell me, okay, what are you doing, okay? So what, what is the situation, okay? So then I... Mm, the C score that you need to find is the same because I'm using the same percentage. So that means that the theta score is the negative 2.33. Okay, so that one is the situation, okay. Mm -hmm. I know now, okay, that you're not so familiar with normal distribution, maybe next class, okay. So I, I, I can, you know, show you more examples about normal distribution and show you something more, you know, more relevant about normal distribution, okay. But here you have an example of how you can use normal distribution in a lottery. Okay, and it was exactly what, what this guy was doing. Okay, he was doing the math, mm -hmm. okay, and he was able to, to determine, okay, how many tickets he had to, to buy, okay. Uh, I mean, the history is amazing, okay. It, it, it's, really? Yeah, it was it's really, it, it really, it, it really amazing. It's really, it, it, it really, it really, it really amazing, okay. I know that there was another, uh, another situation, okay, about, uh, 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 this uh, lottery situation, okay, in favor of the of the you know the people, no, of the people. but I think that was in France, okay, and was a kind of ticket like I think that the people that the one that the people call raspadito, okay, the one that you have to scratch, okay, and you have some price, okay, but the but but the math there is more more difficult, okay, so the math that the guy was using was more more difficult, okay. And indeed was a professor, okay, in statistics, okay, so that's in France, okay, he realized that, you know, that, okay, this one, it should be something that is wrong, so then I should buy exactly this kind of tickets, okay, mm -hmm. and then, indeed, he didn't play the, the, the he didn't buy the, the tickets, he just, okay, made a report, okay, mm -hmm. and sent the report to the, to the states or to whatever is the company that was running the, the, the game, okay, and then yeah, he received a reward, okay? And he changed the, I, I know that history, but I don't have a movie for that history, okay? It was, was kind of different, okay? So, but at least with the movie and this example, okay? It's, it's, it's very relevant, okay? So then it's normal distribution, okay? So then you have two assignments, okay? The first one is, you know, try to see what will be the situation, okay? Uh, with, you know, if you want to win at least $100, okay? How many tickets do you need to buy? Okay, you have to do some math and you have to do your research, Okay, so what is what would be different? Okay, so it will be very similar to this situation. Okay, but you have to make some little modifications. Okay, and then the second one, okay, which is something that is more important, 
okay, please find a ticket with a positive expected value, okay? And then, you know, okay, we'll be happy, okay? Maybe we can, you know, create a company here in yeah. St. Thomas, okay? So then, you know, who knows, okay? If this guy were able to find that loophole in the lottery, why? Yeah. That can be the case, who knows? Okay, so then guys, that one is everything that I have for today, okay? Question, comments? Christina, Daniel? Okay. I am a little confused, but I'm gonna try. Okay. So, uh, Christina, where, where are you from? Where? I am from Colombia. Uh, and are you in Miami now or you are in another state? No, I live in Miami. I live okay. in West Kendall. Okay, perfect. And, Close to um, and, and I am a religion teacher, that's what I do. Okay, nice, nice. Okay. And I'm married to a Cuban for 34 years. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to try, but I uh, it didn't mix up for me in the, in the mathematics. So I'm going to try what I can do. I don't know if I understand it, the, the, the homework. Okay, so the, but, but feel free to contact me. Okay. And then we will uh, try our best. Okay, so this one. So my idea is try to show you real life situations. Okay, so and that one was what I was doing. Okay, so I mean this one is a problem that you know the numbers are you know are are fake. Okay, I was faking the numbers. Okay, but at least I can tell you that there was a real situation. Okay, and you can watch the movie and you can. So then that one is what we are trying to to do. Okay, so then uh, let's. Let's see. Okay, so this one is, you know, I want to, I want to see. Okay, what, what is your mathematical background? And from that, okay, we will begin. Okay, so the idea is try to, you know, analyze data. Okay, and try to understand some of the random process that happen in the nature. Okay, and that's it. Okay. In other words, do question one first. <laughs> okay, we'll try. <laughs> I might email you uh, soon. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Um, that's it. Okay. Doctor. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Professor Medina. I, I just wanted to ask you something that it's a little bit of a favor we can talk offline, but I have actually an exam, a board exam on the 25th, and I do believe this assignment is due on the 24th. Okay, that's so then the uh, the, the, don't, don't worry. I, I, I can extend the, the due date for, for, for the assignment. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, so, don't it's not, it's not a, a big deal. And we pray for you, Dr. Martinez. Oh, well, thank you so much. <laughs> I think that that's what's going to help the most. Really appreciate it. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Have a great thank day. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye, Dr. Abba, Father Shafi, Professor. God bless you. Bye bye. bye. Okay, we'll be sending out the video as soon as we turn it into the YouTube and do all the regular okay. stuff. Bye bye. Okay. 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 So, okay, no, give, give me a minute with you.